morning, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us on this webinar today. I'm Kay and I'm a, a account manager here at Geodesis. And today I'm joined by Jake from Landmark. Now today, Jake's going to be explaining about all the changes that's happening to the Landmark residential reports, why they're changing, and of course, obviously pointing out the benefits to you. Now, myself and my colleague Jess are more than happy to run training sessions with your teams to go through different search packs and to check that you're ordering the right one in line with these changes. But now I'm going to hand you over to Jake. There you go, Jake. Thanks, Kay. Morning, everyone. Um, really, really grateful to have an hour of everyone's time. Um, I promise it'll be a treat. There's no tricks here. <laughs> um, on today's uh, today's webinar. I hope you understand uh, what I'm alluding to there. Um, so yeah, um, it should be um, in terms of structure of today's session, um, we've got quite a lot to go through. So um, we're, we're going to try and make the, the session as, as simple as possible when it comes to the structure. So we've obviously got quite a lot of um, changes that are coming that I need to run, run you through. Um, and that's where really I want to start. So we've gone through a, a redesign process um, and that's going to affect all of the reports um, that we um, provide from the residential report market. Then I think, um, and I, I'm sort of looking at Kay for a little bit of reassurance, I think a lot of um, the Geodesist customers tend to prefer to um, order the EnviroSearch product. And there's a lot of changes that go Correct. into that, that product. Um, so I just want to take you through a little bit of a closer look on that. Um, and then we'll just sort of summarize everything um, towards the end. So um, I want to take you on a, a, a bit of a journey. So we, we could have um, made these changes a while ago. Um, if we were just sort of taking the conventional PDF redesign method. Um, but Landmark has been on a, a bit of a longer journey than that. Um, so we've been we've been spending a lot of time to make sure that the foundations of how we produce our reports um, are first class and sustainable. Um, so during that that process where a lot of the, the changes happened within um, kind of the back office, I suppose, so to speak, um, we we spent that time engaging with our customers because um, we really wanted to listen and understand that when we were in a position when we did want to change our reports, we made those changes um, to, to to kind of fit the the needs and purposes of our of our customers. So today is is kind of like the first point in time where we've kind of almost completed that that journey. Um, and come the nineteenth of November, which is when these releases will be coming live. Um, we will be in a position where we've completely reimagined and remastered um, all of our environmental searches. Um, and yeah, it, it's a it's a very exciting time um, for Landmark, probably long overdue. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be really nice to be able to share with you today um, some of the changes that will be some of, some of the changes that we'll be making. So. Our design brief was was fairly simple, really. Um, it was set by our customers, um, and they overwhelmingly said that um, our, our new reports should be clear. Um, they should be concise, easy to navigate. Those are the the kind of key things um, that that our clients were looking for when we were kind of iter iterating the the different design methods that we could um, um, kind of proceeded with. Um, and we also wanted to recognise that. You know the, the audience of our report is probably worth just recapping so for for conveyances we kind of had an overwhelming message that you know our report should be recommendation clarity risk summary first that's that's the main thing that that people are, are really interested in from a from a conveyancing pers pers perspective to be able to fulfill their kind of requirements but that kind of leaves behind the home buyer so we wanted to bring them on the journey too um so our report should be jargon free you know they should be able to um, be able to engage with what we are trying to convey which i appreciate can be quite complex at, at times um, and really just break it down so it's it's easy for for everyone that does use our report to kind of navigate through um, and see all the different pieces of information that we're trying to convey 
So with the report redesign, you could almost like whittle it down to kind of say, well, fundamentally, they should just be really easy to re interpret. So with that kind of brief in mind, um, you can see on the right hand side, appreciate is quite a text heavy slide. Um, that's generally because um, we've made such uh, a large amount of changes. It's quite hard to put them all on one page, which is quite nice. Um, don't feel like you have to read them. What I'd actually like to do is just show you them. Um, so we're going to spend the next sort of five, 10 minutes just walking you through some of these changes um, in the reports, because these are the proof points that I think help explain um, how much easier it is for our reports to um, to be interpreted, whether you be a conveyancer or whether you're that home buyer. So when we were going through um, some of the feedback sessions um, with some of our clients, um, it was it was quite lovely to um, see someone actually pick up their laptop and hold hold it like this. Um, and it's just a nod to the fact that you know we have and traditionally have done quite a lot of um, portrait reports in the past um, and it really got us thinking you know why why do we have it portrait um, we have moved um, quite considerably away from um, a, a conveyancing method sort of pre-pandemic where everything was was printed off um, and people were, were sharing information in a quite a manual and analog process um, post pandemic um, I'm sure if we all had our cameras on there'll be a, a blend of people that are in the office um, and some that are working from home and I think that's the new norm right we've we've transitioned away from you know being in the office nine to five five days a week to more of a hybrid working um, environment and as a result um, most people now have uh, a laptop that they that they base their, their work from um, and if you're lucky you might have a second screen that enables you to do um, things a little bit more efficiently. So the first thing um, that we, we changed with our report redesign is actually we just completely orientated our report 90 degrees. So we've moved from a portrait um, report to a landscape one. And if you think what that immediate advantage it, that comes with it, um, for the most part, and I, I challenge everyone to go away today and when they then they pick up a, a portrait report, you probably start to see the little tram lines um, of uh, sort of grey space that um, forms the, the columns either side of, of the document that you're actually reading, which creates dead space. And in a world where conveyancers constantly tell us that um, they don't want to you know, move past the front page if they can't help it. The heavy lifting um, of the front page means that we've got to have everything on there as much as possible in a clear and concise way that makes it really easy for you to understand what parts of our report need your attention. Um, because from then that becomes um, kind of a, an easy sort of checklist of things that you need to do. So front and for, front and center, sorry, um, we need to be able to show you at a glance all of the things that we are um, assessing. Um, but more importantly, which ones um, need your attention? So we've kept our red, amber, green traffic light system. We've kept everything um, sort of quite clean and clear. Um, our user experience guys will will tell you that um, you know white space means that you create that space for for things that are on the page to pop, so that you you really know what it is that your your sort of your where your attention should be. So hopefully that kind of introduces um, a, a, a very top, top level, sorry, um, some of the, the changes that we're, we're making on the front page. Um, we've, we've also included master map, which um, if you were um, ordering your EnviroSearch or Home Check product in the past, used to be based on just a, a point based site geometry. Um, with the changes that we're making, that has now been um, upgraded so that we, we prefer and would like to accept um, sites as polygon, um, mainly because you can you can start to um, provide a, a higher degree of accuracy when we when we're running um, our reports to our risk models, so that we know that the the outcomes um, are as accurate as they they are um, or they they possibly can be. So um, master map is obviously the most detailed one that the ordnance survey provide. That's on the front page, so that you've got a little checklist um, just to make sure that we are searching the area that you're anticipating. Now. Hyperlinks aren't a, a new piece of technology to um, the industry or indeed um, the world, but they are very useful. Um, we had some interesting feedback when we went through this process because a lot of people recognised hyperlinks were good, um, but if used um, 
you know too much then they can become a bit of a negative so that's something that we when we we learned when we were redesigning our reports so the purpose of hyperlinks for us is to help the the audience so that would be the conveyance or the home buyer navigate to the key parts of our report we didn't want to put too many in there because the feedback was that if you have too many hyperlinks you kind of aimlessly are, are clicking through the report and you kind of feel a bit disorientated and you end up on page 28 not really knowing why you're there or what you're looking at um, so the hyperlinks that um, we've put in are, are kind of if you think about the two user journeys of what we're trying to do is the front page is trying to give you um, the headline summary of what you need to do next where's your attention needed so these hyperlinks will link to our new exec summary pages more on that to come in a moment's time and the purpose of that hyperlink is you know when something is identified the exact summary page dedicated to that particular risk will tell you all the information that you need so that's the the first um, hyperlink journey for, for people that are picking up our report. The second one is from the um, exec summary page to the more detailed information at the back of the report. So if you think in, in essence, what we're trying to do is bounce the audience through the report um, in, a, in a kind of um, easy format. So it's, you know, like I just said, easy for you to, to get to where you need to go. Um, so for the most part, you know, those two, um, two workflows um, would be really easy um, to navigate off using these hyperlinks and then we've also got a nod to the home buyer um, so we will um, include um, lots of home buyer advice um, throughout the report on the front page it's really introducing the purpose of the report and how to navigate it so they know from the outset you know you can give this to a home buyer um, with no prerequisite explanation they will be able to pick it up and know exactly what a landmark report is trying to tell them and how to navigate through that to get the information that they're looking for and we'll continue um, that theme throughout the report so you'll start to see um, other home buyer we call them border plates maybe um, just signposting to them um, you know what we're doing um, in certain parts of the report and more importantly why um, so the structure of um, our new reports is going to be changing to what you are, are kind of used to at the moment so if you take Envira search for the moment yes it is still um, sectioned um, in terms of you know contaminated land flood etc but what we've tried to do is create um, a, a report redesign so that people who are picking up our report don't have to go past the exact summary pages so for every one of these um, risk profiles that we've got on the front page you will now receive one exact summary page per risk so what that means um, in, in layman's terms is that you've got nine risks, you've got a front page. So if you do the maths of one page um, or one exec summary per risk, your EnviroSearch report now um, is going to be 10 pages long. In reality, there, there will be additional pages, you know, after the data section. We'll, we'll come to that in a moment. But you don't need to go and engage with that. Um, everything that you need will be in that first the first 10 page 10 pages of your document and that is a bit of a shift change to, to what we're used to at the moment and really it was really just trying to kind of make everything clear and concise so that everyone knew um, you know the, the structure and layout of all of the landmark reports so what I'm showing you here obviously I've got an Envira search up on screen that you can see as an example but this is a standardized format that we'll be um, distributing across all of our core residential reports and all of our um, ancillary reports too so the, there's a there's a whole swathe of changes happening from the 19th of November so here we go here's a, here's an example of um, our new exec summary pages so I've um, I've got an example of flood here for you um, and I just wanted to kind of um, just give you a little bit of reassurance as to you know what what what's on this page, um, and more importantly, to um, to let you know that all of this is going to be fairly standardised um, and repetitive in the sense that you will have the same layout, um, usability, and functionality on every exact summary page as you go through the report for all of the different risks. So for each exec summary page, in this example, we've got flood. We will always tell you what the risk is that we're providing the exec summary page for. Um, we'll let you know how we're assessing it. So more on that to come in a moment. We'll give you the outcome. And then the, the main body of the summary um, is below. 
Now, when we're talking about um, the the maps, um, it's really important um, that from the feedback that people wanted to have the the underlying information in a spatial format, a spatial cue to help convey and explain what the outcome of the report is. So if you think about this exec summary page, we know what the assessment outcome is. And now we've got um, a, a visual prompt, a visual cue that helps explain the underlying data where it is spatially so that you can really understand um, what the risk is at your particular property. We'll also supplement that with um, you know, your, your usual legend so that you understand what the risk profile is. Um, and as I mentioned before, this is where you've got the opportunity to hyperlink. So this is the second jersey journey, second step of that journey, hyperlinking into the data section for, in this example, where there is some surface water or groundwater risk. And you can see at the top of the screen here, this 60% figure is really important. This was our customers and clients telling us um, that they wanted to have um, the, the maps and the, the underlying data that's formulating the opinion as high up in the report as possible. And having it on the exec summary page, um, supplemented by the you know, professional opinion, the recommendations of you know, the, the text, what is the outcome? Do I need to do anything? You know, it's really important. And do you remember on the first page I was talking about the, the home buyer boilerplate? We've now got this on every exec summary. So the, the person that's um, purchasing a, a home knows why we are um, why we are assessing each individual risk topic. So why are we searching for flood, which provides them with the context that they need so that they can look at it in tandem with the risk outcome. And then moving on, this is uh, this is kind of uh, the stopping cue that enables us to communicate to whoever's reading the report that everything that you you need um, is provided already in 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 the form of the the front page and the exact summaries. But if you do need to get and establish all of the detail, um, this is kind of the stopping cue to say, well, everything else um, beyond this report is where that detail is. So making sure that people know that our reports are clear and concise in the sense that the front page and exec summaries are aware where you need to make um, the focus of your attention. Now I've done quite a few sessions with Kay, um, Jess, um, Johnny and the rest of the team um, and they've um, got access to a whole swathe of, of supporting documents so um, I'm sure um, if you haven't got it already um, we do have um, some additional um, documents that are really good at kind of explaining exactly what we've just gone through in terms of introducing you to our new template, where things are, what we've changed but more importantly why because we've only changed things that um, we know our clients um, are looking to have improved from our current format so the um, the user guide is a great starting point for that it's a very top level summary um, that provides you with kind of a section by section breakdown of all of our reports um, and then like I said just explain some of the changes that we've made um, and more importantly why we've done that so hopefully that's got you a little bit excited about um, kind of the the complete remastering and redesigning of our of our products. Um, the templates, like I said, will will affect all of the um, core and ancillary residential reports. So when I'm referring to core reports, that means home check, that means EnviroSearch, that means risk view, and then where some reports rely on ancillary reports, so ones that are just focused on a specific risk, such as flood, landmark flood. All of those reports are now going through the, this new template design so they'll all benefit from the the very same great usability and functionality um, in a kind of standardized format that you will start to get um, very familiar with so if you pick up a home check report and you then pick up an enviro search report you know you'll know where to find the information that you're looking for which we we know is is something that, that our clients really really value um, sample reports are on their way, um, so when when it gets to the time when you know you want to have a, a detailed conversation with with Kay and Jess, um, obviously um, you'll have access to um, the sample report, and that provides you with um, a, you know a lovely way of sort of going through it in a bit more detail. So appreciate that. Well, that will probably be the next step that will be coming. So that kind of um, we've walked through that first section that we had on the agenda. It's all about um, 
kind of just showcasing and sharing with you the report redesign. So the, the second half of um, the session is really thinking about the, the content within each of the core reports because that's where a lot of the change um, has happened. So the, again, the core reports are the home check, the environment search and the risk view. Um, and what we will spend a bit of time now is just kind of establishing what's changed in each one of those reports um, so that you can begin to see the value that, we, that you will have in, in the reports moving forward. But before we do that, um, I just wanted to take you through um, this slide, which is all about how we assess the different risks in our report. Now, this was something um, that from the from the feedback that we had, we were probably not doing as well as we should have done in, in years gone by. And the reason why we want to put and shine a bit of a light on it now is because we are now transitioning to a world where it's very, very important that we communicate to you um, the level of assessment that you're getting um, so that you um, feel reassured that you're getting if you are the best level of, of assessment out there, um, but just it helps with your de your decision making process as well. So for us, um, our, our types of assessments start, start with an alert assessment. Um, as it suggests, it alerts you to um, potential risks that um, could be identified from from the from the data that we have, um, and it may be relevant to your particular property. And what that does is it it alerts you and prompts you for further investigation. So this is where um, our core reports work with our ancillaries really well. We provide you with a high level summary, a kind of binary yes or no, is there an issue or not, to then subsequently prompt you um, to order a more detailed report when required to do so. The next level up is the full assessment, um, and that removes that requirement to engage with that ancillary report. So you get a full data driven assessment, an automated outcome, but you have no reliance to go off and order an ancillary report. The content of the ancillary report is included as standard in full assessment outcomes. And in actual fact, for a lot of the risks that Landmark provide, um, full assessment represents the best level of assessment out there in the market. So, you know, there, there will only be certain instances where you can elevate above and beyond that to professional opinion. So just bear that in mind that, you know, you might be looking at some of the um, some of the different risk profiles and probably wondering why they're not in the professional opinion. Um, we tend to only go up to the professional opinion standard um, in line with risks that there's, you know, very strong law society guidance on. And then the professional opinion is effectively, well, as it says there, it's the highest degree of accuracy, but it's effectively taking that full assessment um, and giving all of that information to a trained environmental consultant. And they've got the knowledge and understanding and the expertise to review what that data is trying to convey. Is it over exaggerating what is the, the kind of overall risk opinion for the site? And more often than not, what it actually leads to is them downgrading and lowering the risk. And that could be the difference between receiving a pass report um, and a further action report. So the, the benefit, obviously, is that you, you get less issues. So we're we're increasing our, our past rate, if that makes sense. Um, and obviously giving you the confidence that we're providing you with the highest degree of accuracy. And actually Landmark celebrated its uh, 30th birthday this year. Um, so you've obviously got the, the experts that have been doing this um, for, for 30 years, supporting conveyances through transactions. So we really do know what we're looking for and how to provide you with, with the best client care. So um, this slide dives straight into um, uh, giving you a little bit of an overview about the Home Check report, what it offers at the moment in terms of its current content, um, where we are, are transitioning to, and therefore the, the difference um, between them and the value that we are adding to that particular report. So you can see here um, we've got um, professional opinion for contaminated land, that is continuing. You know, we, as you would expect, we've been doing that for years. All of our reports include contaminated land as standard. That is where environmental searches came from, um, you know, from, from the early noughties and actually before that. 
But you can start to see from the second one down, ground stability, we used to include that alert assessment. So do you remember the previous side when we were talking about the different assessment types? Previously, or at the moment, home check has uh, this alert, the high level summary that prompts you to go away and order that home check mining ups and science report um, when required to do so. So um, from the 19th of um, November, we now have that home check mining and science report included as standard. So the full assessment is going in, removing that requirement for you to have to go away and order it and react for those alerts. And also you can see below the ground stability module, we've actually introduced a couple of more alerts. Um, so previously you didn't have access to the energy and infrastructure module or um, indeed planning applications. So those are two new alerts that have been added in. And I've purposely um, left coal to the last one because I want to spend a bit of time um, going through this um, in a bit more detail because it's quite cool, um, especially for those that are, are conveying in areas that are close or on um, the coalfield consultation area. So really, if I was to, to summarise home check, you know, the report is that initial assessment across all of those key risks. It identifies those potential issues that may require that further investigation um, and obviously offers, um, you know, that analysis that when a supplementary report is required will prompt you to do so. So when we're talking about coal, um, I think that the market's generally geared up to uh, a kind of a binary understanding as to whether or not you're on the coal field or not and as a result do I need to order a con 29m so you can see here you you know this might be a familiar process to you the first thing that you might do is determine whether or not you're located in in the affected area and you might be using an alert tool to do that um, so geodesists might have something on their platform that allows you to understand whether or not you're on the coal field or not and from there you've got the decision to okay well do I take that as given or do I do I need a little bit of extra security in the in the form of a no search um, certification or if you are on it then that obviously provides you with the prompt to go away and order that con 29m however um, we are now moving um, and kind of redefining that process a little bit so um, our home check and indeed the enviro search report um, now comes with um, a certification that in cases where there is not only just no coal but is there a low coal mining related risk um, so therefore that you know if a property is located within a coal mining affected area but crucially there's no relevant record of mining activity that is present our report will now confirm that there is no need to order a coal report and certify that accuracy with a statement and we do that certification is based on a, on a un, unique data set um, only available to us and that certification is warranted so it's supported by um, one million pounds worth of um, indemnity insurance and hopefully that provides you with, with the assurance that you probably need um, and coverage against you know loss through perhaps any inaccuracy concerns that you have and you know this is uh, kind of a, a, a market first um, and it and it really does sort of reevaluate how you could if you wanted to understand coal risk um, appreciate for those visual learners the next slide might be a little bit more interesting for you so here is um, an example of uh, what we're talking about. So the green area here is effectively off the coalfield consultation area. And then as we transition to this mauve colour, um, this is actually kind of what we would traditionally consider is the coalfield consultation area. And you can see here that there's a whole swathe of um, areas um, that are potentially fall into this category. Now what we've effectively done is we've gone away and produce a CON29M for the entire coalfield consultation area and as a result we've been able to categorize them into low, medium and high risk. And what that means is that we have we can visually show you on this slide but we can confidently say to you that there are areas on the coalfield consultation area where traditionally you've been prompted to go away and order a CON29M but you would actually receive back no records despite the presence of coal being um, located on site. So what we're trying to do is remove those instances, remove those instances where you're ordering a CON29M reports, but no results are coming back. 
So the certification in the in the home check and the EnviroSearch screen now includes um, the no reliance to order a coal report when you're in this low area. And you can see here there's quite a few small villages and towns um, with population densities, you know, ranging, but a significant amount of um, properties that would typically have these kind of false positives um, reported in a screen. And there's some um, lovely stats that I'll, I'll go through to to support this as well with you. Um, in fact, I'll just pop them up now. Why not? Um, so you can see here, um, we know roughly that there's about uh, 9 million properties that are located within the Coalfield Consultation Zone. Um, and of that 9 million, there's about 3 million of them that fit the, this profile of we know that there's coal present, but they will return no records. And what, that's the one that those are the, the sites that we are, are removing as part of this coal screen. And to you guys, that's a huge benefit. You know, that's huge efficiency and cost saving exercises. We're reducing the number of times you need to order a CON29M by about a third, so 34%. And then you've got that lovely symbiosis between um, our alert and the full report. We will never um, prompt you to order a CON29M report unless there's a real reason to do so. So that is those medium and high risk alerts. And really what that's doing is shrinking the, and refining our alert system. Um, so we're, we're making it a, as accurate and as efficient as possible. So that means in terms of the process, um, you know, you'll order the report, your home check um, will come. And if there's no um, risks identified, then you'll have this certification embedded within the report. And then for the instances where you, you're on the coal field and there's a medium or high risk, um, then you've obviously got the opportunity to react to that alert. Um, we, you'll have access to our landmark um, CON29M report or landmark coal report to order and supplement your, your home check or EnviroSearch product. So hopefully um, quite a compelling um, improvement already just to, to the, well, we're talking about home check initially, but this does flow through into the EnviroSearch product too. And if we kind of keep the theme of um, sort of what lies beneath the ground, um, we've actually got um, the improvement of including the home check mining as a science report um, in full um, as you can see there, it's highlighted as a, as a full assessment, so it's now included as standard. Um, and it comes with all of the sections that you would expect to see from the Home Check Mining and Science Report on the former mining, brine extraction, the old infill ground, um, and some of the natural stat hazards, which are the shrinking and swelling of clay, running sands, etc., etc. So an instant saving there of um, £30, which is removing the reliance of having to go away and order that, that Home Check Mining and Science Report. Um, we've also spent some time um, improving our flood model. So whilst this is remaining an alert assessment and home check, um, you'll be um, polygonized enabled, which basically means that we've got a high degree of accuracy, which means that we will be refining our risk model so that it's an on and off site risk, and that will reduce the amount of times that um, you'll receive further action reports of that, I have no doubt. And then we're also introducing an alert um, to the energy and infrastructure module. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, this is talking about um, oil and gas exploration blocks, um, you know, any new wind or solar energy projects that might be built in your surrounding area. Um, other renewable energies, typically things like anaerobic digester plants, um, for example. And then any changes in terms of um, uh, infrastructure projects that might be coming your way in close proximity to the site. Not only that, we've also got planning information for you. Um, so um, this is how you can react to the alert and work in, in tandem with the landmark planning report. The applications are really there to, to give you a little bit of an understanding about what's changing in your surrounding area. Um, and we, we kind of recognise that the changing of your environment um, around a particular property can affect your intrinsic enjoyment of that, both positively and negatively. Our role in this process is to give you the information so that that informs your, your opinion. And you, I've cited some of the, um, the kind of things that we typically know people are looking for in terms of, um, you know, they potential nuisances of noise, traffic and construction disruption. Um, you know, there, there might be strains on amenities. We are there just to provide you with the information to help inform your understanding about what's changing nearby. 
So time to take breath. Here's a summary of all of the upgrades that have happened with Home Check. Um, obviously, uh, we've talked about the Home Check Mining and Subsidence report now included as standard. We've got this brand spanking new um, alert assessment where if they are at no or low risk, then we will warrant that and give you the peace of mind that you, it's not an issue that you have to, to worry about. We've introduced some new alerts for planning and energy and infrastructure, and we've enhanced the flood alert as well for you. So hopefully that's a, a good um, sort of summary of, of home check. Um, what I was going to do now is to move and transition into the two other reports um, and appreciate that the next one is probably the one that most people are interested in, which is the EnviroSearch one. Um, so EnviroSearch um, is, a, is probably the most trusted landmark report um, in, in the market in the sense of it's the, the one that a lot of people order. Um, the report still offers um, that level of detailed assessment that you, that you would um, uh, expect, but we have enhanced it in other in some areas as well. Um, so it has um, newly added modules such as the the climate change, um, and it will provide you with a breakdown of all of the different risks, that full ev evaluation of, of each of those perils, um, and it still represents uh, the perfect report for when certainty is needed. So in the same format that we have with Home Check, we've got the current content on the left hand side where we are transitioning to in the middle and therefore what value is being added. So you can see here there's a lot of information on, on the additional value that's been added. So if we break that down in a little bit more detail, um, we now have a uh, full flood assessment. So that's the equivalent of you know, the landmark flood report, which traditionally was you know, a £42.50 report. We've now got climate change. Our climate change standalone product is in there as standard. So that's an additional £30. The Home Check Mining of the Science report that we talked about previously with Home Check, again, is in EnviroSearch. So that's another £30 worth of value. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then also the energy and infrastructure is transitioning from an alert assessment up to a full assessment, which means now you're getting effectively a £42.50 ancillary report in there. So that's four big modules that have transitioned away from an alert to a full assessment. And that represents in total £145 worth of value that's in there. Plus, not only that, you're getting our brand spanking new warranted coal alert. Plus, you're getting the addition of the planning applications as an alert. And if that wasn't enough, then we talked about how we're redesigning the template and all of the benefits of making our, our report template familiar, clear, concise, jargon free and suitable for both conveyances and home buyers in terms of consumers that are engaging with our particular report. So there's there's quite a lot to, to get through um, and it works in the same way. So we've got um, for the coal alert, um, it follows the same process in terms of, you know, we'll screen out when it's a risk or not. Um, if it is a risk, then you still have the ability to order um, a CON29 in tandem with it. Um, and probably the biggest addition um, is the inclusion of climate change. Um, so for conveyances um, and, and solicitors, um, the duty to provide advice on environmental risks, I think it's probably been well documented and is, is more crucial than ever. And I think these enhancements of including climate change um, in both EnviroSearch and also our risk view product, um, I think ensures that your environmental due diligence extends beyond just today's concerns. Uh, and starts to consider future risks for your clients. And, you know, why, why does it matter for you? Well, with climate change becoming um, an increasingly significant factor in the, in the property market, I guess you guys um, not only have to start to consider the current risks, but those that could emerge in the future. And this is where the, the, the Landmarks Climate Change module offers that, that foresight um, needed to give that really comprehensive advice to your clients, ensuring that their investments are protected against perhaps the uncertainties of a changing climate in the future. 
we've only seen this week i mean obviously not in in the uk but um in southeast spain about the implications of of climate change and and the changing of weather patterns and how that implicates um certain certain risk perils such as flooding so the inclusion of this module in virus search and as i mentioned it will be in risk view as well um represents kind of a, a that there's a seamless transition as part of the, the due diligence process. So you have it and it's included in our report in exactly the same way that we have all of our other risks. Um, and we've reported it in our exec summaries so that it's really easy for you guys to be able to understand what the conclusion is and convey that to your clients. Um, so um, the, the climate change is now um, included in in there as standard a couple of weeks ago we had the um, law society uh property conference which is an, uh, an annual event um in there they showcased um the new um climate change um practice note that's coming um at the moment it's still open for consultation i think they're providing a six-week window which i think we're in the last week of um i think it runs till till next week so if you haven't done already please use this as an opportunity to provide feedback to the law society on what you think the, the drafting um you know is like if that consultation period goes well um they are hoping to release um, the practice note in the new year which um, you know does represent um, kind of the earliest possible period in time when when we expect to see um, a practice note out there providing a recommendation to you on what you should be assessing and I think um, we've noticed as well a, a shift in buying behavior um, so we I sort of mentioned at the beginning that we, we did extensive feedback um, for a number of years and we've seen a transition between kind of where we were when the guidance first came out um, in April 23 to where we're almost on the cusp of where we've got a property specific practice note coming coming in January and that buying behavior is means that we're, we're seeing people more often than not include climate change as a, as a risk as standard in their particular product. Also, just a nod to make sure that um, when you do um, choose to order a climate change report, make sure that your provider includes physical and transitional risks. Um, so physical ones refer to flood, coastal erosion, ground stability, heat stress, elements like that. So you're understanding how that risk changes over, excuse me, over time. But also transitional risks. Transitional risks are those that um, uh, are going to be really important moving forward as our, uh, we sort of uh, have already committed to a, a low carbon economy. So by 2050, we are we should be in a world where our greenhouse gases have reduced. Um, for the property industry, it's quite important because obviously there are greenhouse gases that are emitted to, to heat um, and keep our keep our houses warm. Um, so we're expecting a swathe of, of guidance and legislation to come down the track as we transition to making our um, property stock in, in the UK um, low carbon, so reducing the amount of greenhouse gases needed um, to power our homes. So hopefully that all makes sense. It's one of the bigger changes in EnviroSearch, so I wanted to sort of pause and make sure that um, I, I conveyed the, the main reasons why we've um, included that particular product um, as standard in the EnviroSearch Enviro range. Not only that, um, but EnviroSearch now has the equivalent of landmark flood report included as standard. So expect to see the full breakdown of all of the different risks from river coastal surface and groundwater. Um, you'll have all of the um, and, in insurance advice statements that you would expect to see with the landmark flood report and like i said we've got um improvements to our risk models that have come from the ability of um you know having this product polygonized and hopefully what that means for you guys is that there's that fewer delays high degree of accuracy less issues that you have to be worried about we've also got in in envirosearch that home check mining and science report included as standard so i don't really need to dwell on this because this is exactly the same as what we were talking about with our home check report expect to see the same change in envirosearch you're getting that full assessment removing that requirement to order any ancillary report and then we've got the energy and infrastructure um, report so that is now included as standard in envirosearch 
Um, it's quite an interesting one at the moment. Um, subtly related to what we were just talking about, um, you know, when we were talking about the climate change report. Um, clean, pa sorry, <laughs> clean power generation um, is front and centre at the moment of the UK strategy to reach this net zero, reducing greenhouse gas emissions um, by up to 90 percent by by 2050. And the government are really setting targets for for electricity to come from um, green energy sources. Um, so zero carbon generation is the target by by 2035. So what that means is that, you know, that doesn't come without changes to our traditional methods. So we are expecting to see more wind energy and more solar energy projects um, popping up all over the country. And that's where the energy and infrastructure reports to the energy side more than anything is really useful at trying to pinpoint where those changes are and what that means in terms of relationship to your property and obviously whether or not there's any intrinsic um, change to your enjoyment of that property now knowing where they are and, and what their what their location is. Not only that then, EnviroSearch also includes um, our a new alert for planning. Um, as you can see, it's bottom right there. It provides you with that alert assessment and it's all, like I said, it's all about that understanding where applications are in the vicinity of your site to be able to you know understand whether or not you need to go away and order a landmark planning report to further understand if those changes are going to have an intrinsic enjoyment to you and your home hopefully your dream home so like i did with home check here's the one page summary of all of those those changes which provides a really nice at a glance view um, lots to to go through um, so we talked about the new um, coal mining search that's available in home check and in envirosearch we've gone from an alert to full flood we've gone from an alert to full ground stability we've gone from an alert to full energy and infrastructure we now include our full climate change report as standard and we've also introduced this new alert for planning applications in the vicinity of your site. So a whole swathe of changes in addition to that of the, the, the text um, and template and format and usability layout that we talked about at the beginning, you know, laying it out in landscape, making sure that you understand what these risks are on the front page and only interact with the exec summary pages when we prompt you to do so. And if you really, really want to see how we formulated that opinion, you do have access to that data section, but you really only need to worry about the front page and those exec summaries. <coughs> Excuse me. So then finally, we've got um, Risk View Resi, um, which is, I guess, the, the premium product, um, the highest that we have in, in our landmark residential product portfolio. Um, only two changes that we're making to Risk View, um, but they're fairly substantial ones, so worth talking about. <coughs> we've got um, climate change now included as full. So traditionally in the in the current way, um, that wasn't there, a risk module that we assessed. Um, and now we've got full coal. So let's jump to that straight away. So full coal means that you benefit from the same screen that we have in Home Check in EnviroSearch, where you know it's adding that extra layer of assessing what's on the coal field and screening out those low risk sites for you. Um, you will get that as a as a certified um, you know outcome when when it's you know uh, that kind of uh, risk tolerance um, but where we are now seeing that um, medium or high risk on the coal field um, that's when we'll include uh, a CON29M effectively um, in risk view residential as standard so that's answering all of the 11 questions as set out by the law society um, and includes also the um, mining entries and interpretive report and the subsidence buffer report as standard in there. So you're getting quite a lot of additional information for you when you're on that coal field and that medium to high risk is all in there automatically. Um, and I guess that integration um, provides a, a, a smoother, more efficient process. Uh, it ensures that you are receiving all of the necessary information in a one comprehensive report. And not only that, 
um, we are including, as we are with EnviroSearch, our new um, climate change module. So the standalone product at the moment is essentially in the risk view resi um, as standard. Um, so again, don't really need to go over this in too much detail because we spent just a little bit of time um, talking about that with the EnviroSearch product. So we've got two big upgrades to the to the risk view. Um, having that um, that coal mine report when it's required um, and also having that full climate change module as well. So you might remember this slide. This is us talking about all of the different types of, of assessment that pr we provide for our particular products. Um, and it's really important just to remind that before I show you this slide, which is looking at the three products side by side. So you can see here that all of our um, new products um, are, are a kind of like an all-in-one risk product portfolio. Really what you have to decide now um, is how you want those risks assessed. Um, so you can see here we, we're clearly communicating the different levels um, of assessment you get with your report from professional opinion to full assessment and alert assessment. So you can really begin to see um, how we're changing through our product portfolio. And that just kind of leads me to go full circle just to provide a little bit of a, a summary of everything that we talked about. So hopefully you guys um, feel that we are providing a bit of more comprehensive coverage um, so that you now know that all of our reports have those key risks included. Um, I think the clarity on the risk assessment is probably the most important thing. Um, so when we were talking about um, the, the, the the template changes, it's all about providing you um, and conveying the environmental risk um, in a really clear and concise manner so that it provides you with a, a really easy way to, to take that information to, to your clients. And we've included um, some, some new enhanced usability, so you will start to become very familiar um, because we're not changing um, uh, that the format of our reports, we're keeping this fixed structure. And like it says there, that familiarity enables you to move from one case to the next seamlessly because you know where to go looking for the information that you're, that you're looking for. So hopefully um, today's been a, a useful session for you um, in the sense that um, it's provided you with a little bit of a review of and summary of all of the, the things that we're changing um, with regard to the, the layout of our new reports, which, um, you know, uh, I think are, are beautiful. I think I'm going to be bold and say that I think they look beautiful, but they are functional as well. You know, they serve a purpose and there's a reason why they, they look um, as good as they do. Um, and then you've also got um, a little bit of an overview today of how um, or, or what we're changing at product level. Um, and the value that you're you're now getting with all of the different reports. Um, and obviously um, you've got um, Kay and Jess and the rest of the team available. Um, looks like you've got uh, me from 10 years ago, but um, uh, I am around. You can ask me direct questions. I've got my contact details up on the screen there as well. So yeah, please feel free to reach out to anyone um, if you do have any questions. Um, yeah, we've got a bit of time actually. So we've got five minutes for anyone that would like to pop a, a question in the chat. Um, I'm yeah, happy okay, to answer them now. One, I can see one question uh, asked by Felicity. Will climate change also be included in your commercial searches offering? That's a great question. Thank you, Felicity. Um, so the, the changes that we're making from the 19th of November are exclusively residential reports. So um, you will start to have the, the climate change module in the EnviroSearch product um, and also um, the risk view residential product. Um, in the new year, we are looking to follow a similar process for our commercial products. So we haven't got there yet, um, but we are looking at that in the new year. Um, and I don't think actually it's been confirmed in our product roadmap as to what products um, will include climate change as standard or not. Um, the, the commercial and particularly real estate lawyers um, 
have a different set of requirements. So we've got to be really careful to listen to them um, and make sure that we get that right before releasing um, the new product range. Um, we will go through a huge um, sort of go to market activity. So we'll have something similar um, for you um, in, in the new year when it comes to um, understanding what changes we'll be making to our commercial products. Um, but Felicity, um, we're all ears at the moment. So if you would like to be involved in that feedback, um, then yeah, please make it known to, to KRI. Um, and we'd love to we'll have a, a little bit of a workshop session, workshop session with you just to understand from your perspective what you're looking for when it comes to, to climate and commercial transactions. Brilliant. Thank you, Jake. And a question from Joe. I think I can answer this. Okay. Joe says, will we be sent the slides? Yes, I will send all of Jake's slides out um, by the end of the week, so everybody will get a copy. Excellent. Any more questions, Kay? Was that? That was it. Oh, we've been let off lightly, haven't we? <laughs> oh, hang on. Somebody's typing. Um, Joe's typing. Um, no, oh. that's it. All cool. questions um answered right Wonderful. thank you very much jake we really appreciate the update and we can see that um they've redeveloped really really well so thank you oh, and thanks everybody feedback. for attending yeah thanks guys um hopefully we uh i don't know I, can i think of another halloween pun <laughs> i hope you're not i hope you're not spooked by the changes that we're making there we go. Uh, but yeah, no, I really do appreciate an hour of your day is is precious. So thank you very much for everyone that came came along and listened. Um, here to support you if you have any follow up questions, of course. Thanks. Bye, everyone. All right. Take care.